Let's create a spring part using sweep feature. In order to create spring, you need a helix curve. I'm going to use the top plane and make a sketch. You need to first sketch a circle or use a circular edge of an existing body. So I'm going to create a circle with a diameter 10 millimeters. All right. So that's the diameter of your helix curve. And I go to Feature, Curves, and there's a helix and spiral, or go from the main menu, Insert, Curve, Helix, Spiral. And because the circular sketch is selected, it's already creating the preview of the helix curve. There are a couple of options here, Pitch and Revolution, or Height and Revolution, Height and Pitch and Spiral. So pitch is the amount of linear advancement when you turn one revolution. So we can define by uh, pitch and revolution, or you can specify height of the spring and how many revolution in that height, or you can have height and pitch. You can specify the overall height and what's the pitch. And also you can make spiral curve. Let's just use a pitch and revolution for now. Use, I don't know, like three. And I'm going to have multiple revolutions. Or you can use the height and revolution. So I'm going to add 25 and 7. And you can specify start angle where it can start. Uh, so you can have zero start angle. And you can specify clockwise or counterclockwise direction. And you can have tapered. So you can add the taper angle along the direction. You can have it inward or outward direction. So I'm going to turn off the taper and just use this helix curve. So the curve is created. And I can just use feature swapped boss base and because this is a spring I can just use the circular profile and I can use this helix curve but obviously this is too big so I'm gonna reduce that to okay let's just modify the helix I'm gonna decrease the number of revolutions so that I'm going to have this steeper angle. Okay, so as you can see here, this sweep feature section will be a circle, and that circle will follow this path. Instead of circle, if I choose to use a different section so that I have a plane to sketch on, all right, so I'm going to use that right plane as my sketching plane. And let's draw some profile. So here I'm going to use X hexagon, set it horizontal, and diameter is 2. And I want to make sure that this center point should be at the end of the curve. So to do that, you have to select the center point in the sketch. While pressing the control key, you select the curve. And then you have this pierce option. That is similar to coincident, but because the curve is not part of the sketch, but an external entity, and you want to have the coincident to a point in the sketch, you have to use this way. You have to select the point in the sketch and the curve, and the pierce constraint will be available. Now you can use this as a profile, and then I'm going to use Feature, Swap Boss, use that profile, that. All right. So that looks all good, but the problem of this one is 
as you can see here, the profile and the curve will be angled. All right. So if you cut it normal to the helix curve, the section will not be this regular hexagon. Okay. So if you want to make a spring out of this hexagon bar, it will not be exactly like this. Your section should be some skewed hexagon. So this is not the way how you can create a sketch. So I'm going to delete that. In fact, the proper way of creating the sketch is using the plane that is passing through the point and normal to the tangent direction of the curve. So you need to construct a new reference plane. And as I said, it has to pass through the endpoint of the curve. So select the endpoint. Endpoint. It has coincident. And then as a second reference, you select the curve. And then perpendicular constraint is already set. And it's fully fine. So it passed through the point perpendicular to the curve at that point. So that will create this plane. Create a new sketch using the plane. Now the same way, I'll create a hexagon. All right, that has to be horizontal and size. Two, and I want to put that onto that endpoint. So select the center point and select the curve and pierce. All right. So I'm going to go features, swap boss, select this, and select the curve. That's one if I look front view. Now the plane is angled and that is normal to the curve. So this is exactly the geometry when you have a hexagon bar and if you make it a, a spring, which will be not a common case, but just for illustration, you're going to have the exact geometry that you want. All right, next. The same feature can be used as a negative feature, swept cut. So for that, I have already created a cylinder. And I'm going to edit the sketch. And instead of this, I'm going to make some shape, kind of similar to like thread. I mean, it's not exact uh, shape as thread, but let's just make a approximation and make it horizontal. This center line has two purposes. One is to make them symmetric. So I'm going to add symmetricity, selecting all three, symmetric. So now they can be a symmetric. And another thing is you have now have a point in the middle of the line. So I'm going to dimension this first. Let's say, I don't know, like 1, 1.5, and this to be 0.25. I'm just making a random shape with that. And I need to make constant the pierce between this center point and the curve. So again, select this endpoint of the center line and the curve. You got a pierce. Okay. And I go to features. Oh, we have to exit from the sketch. Otherwise, the sweep feature will not be available. Let's go to swap cut. Select this profile, 
and select the curve. Say okay. Now I got that one. I'm going to hide that plane and hide the curve. And you'll see, let's adjust the revolution, increase the revolution. 10. Get the swept cut. So it is like the profile, and that is the tool shape, and that tool will cut this cylinder along the helical curve. 